Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1,129. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about, is there any hope for stocks to recover? Because it's been a grueling year for investors this year. There's really been nowhere to hide. Stocks have been down, bonds have been down, even the 60-40 stocks to bonds asset allocation that has been popular for a long time, although not really necessarily used recently with bonds near zero interest. But even that old 60-40 allocation produced the worst performance in 100 years. This is how extreme things have gotten because interest rates have gone up so much, inflation has risen so quickly, it's really wreaking havoc on people's paychecks and savings accounts, as well as their investment accounts. And we'll talk more about that later. But first, let's talk about the stock market. It was a difficult day on Friday as we had markets trying to make sense of what Chairman Powell said. He raised interest rates half a percent this week instead of three quarters of a percent, and we anticipated that that would be the case. But nonetheless, because of his comments still being very hawkish or still sounding like he wants to continue to raise rates, it was hard for investors to assess what kind of damage the Federal Reserve is going to do in the future and what they have already done to the economy with these aggressive inflation-fighting interest rate hikes. In just the past two days, the S&P 500 has wiped out more than $1.1 trillion of market value. That's an enormous amount of wealth that is just gone. Yesterday, some numbers that came in for November's retail sales showed a decline of 0.6% from October. And all kinds of clothing stores and online retailers and general stores reported sales declines as shoppers pulled back on spending extra money and resisting higher prices that they've seen, plus dealing with the slower economy. As prices continue to rise, more families are feeling the pain. As of November, 63% of Americans were living paycheck to paycheck, according to Lending Club, up from 60% the previous month and near 64% at the all-time high in March. It doesn't matter what your income, even high-income people are under pressure. Of those earning more than six figures, 47% reported living paycheck to paycheck. And that was an increase from 43% in October. Anuj Nayar, Lending Club's financial health officer, said Americans are cash strapped and their everyday spending continues to outpace their income, which is impacting their ability to save and plan. And that's so true. Just with everything that you normally take care of being so much more expensive, it's like getting a big pay cut. It makes it harder to save, makes it harder to invest. Everything all around is just more difficult, more expensive, more stressful. Credit card balances are surging 15%, which is the largest increase in more than 20 years. And I don't know how they get away with it, but credit card companies' interest rates are now over 19% on average. That's an all-time high and still rising. 32% of consumers are saving less than they were saving a year ago, and about a third of adults, or 33%, said they feel somewhat or very uncomfortable about their ability to pay emergency expenses of around $400. Almost 8% said they couldn't afford $400 as an emergency expense at all. But back to what's going on in the stock market. We had what's called triple witching happen today, which is when $2.6 trillion worth of index options are set to expire. This happens once a quarter. It's not an unusual event, but that was a lot to have settling in one particular day. It just can add to volatility. And we did see the Dow down more than 400 points at one point, and then closing down about 281 points. 
Now, what we wanna watch in the stock market is the October lows. We wanna make sure that those lows hold, but I think there's a good chance that the October lows can hold, especially around December, which is right about now, we should be starting a Santa Claus rally, which is a seasonal period of time when the stock market tends to go up. Between Monday and the end of the year, we tend to have a rally or a positive time in stocks during that period of time. So seasonally, it usually works that way. We'll see if that's true this year. Quincy Crosby, chief global strategist at LPL Financial, said, should today's market performance disappoint, Santa could arrive next week to provide holiday greetings and help underpin an even deeper oversold rally even if it's not within the technical definition of when he's supposed to arrive. The market doesn't care when he arrives, just that he actually shows up. So the problem is Fed Chairman Powell wants to see weakness in the jobs market. We have seen what looks like a peak in inflation as we've had lower numbers in inflation come in recently, but he still wants to see the jobs market weaken. And I think we're going to get that in January. I think a lot of employers are probably holding on through the end of the year, through the Christmas sales season, through year-end bonuses for employees. And then in January, they'll make their cuts. We've already heard some financial services firms talk about layoffs in January. So it seems like that's the direction that we're going. And Powell will begin to see the job market weakening in January, which will help him pare back the interest rate hikes. And I think the bond market is already projecting that and telling us that we're going to see lower interest rates. Interest rates have already actually come down for mortgage rates. And that's good news for housing. It's good news for a lot of things. Personally, I think these rate hikes have been overdone and they were too fast. And we really need to give it some time and see how much damage it's really done to the economy. More than 60% of economists are expecting a recession in 2023. One of the harshest critics of the Federal Reserve is University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business professor, Jeremy Siegel, who thinks that the Federal Reserve continuing to hike interest rates into next year means that the odds of a difficult downturn in the economy are ahead. He said, I think the Fed is making a terrible mistake. Their plan, their dot plot is way too tight. Inflation is basically over, despite the way Chairman Jerome Powell characterizes it. According to Siegel, the central bank should refrain from hiking further or keeping interest rates elevated next year. Talk of going higher and staying high in 2023, I think would guarantee a very steep recession, he said. Well, I tend to agree with him and I don't always, but in this case, I do think the Fed has done too much too quickly. They haven't given it time to work and it's wiped $7 trillion worth of wealth off of the books we're all feeling it. The good news is that stock markets tend to start recovery about six months before the end of a recession. So before we hear any news that the recession is over or things are getting better, the stock market will already anticipate it and already start going up. Because of its deep oversold condition, the amount of bearishness in the market, and the fact that the October lows look like they could quite possibly hold, I'm gonna stay positive and say, we'll look for our Santa Claus rally and for that to continue into January ahead. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.